We're taking an in-depth look at women's heart health. The Centers for Disease Control uh, says that heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States. The leading cause of death, but symptoms can be misdiagnosed, even silent, leading to devastating health consequences. CBS in New York's Christine Johnson recently spoke with two women and their cardiologist for a revealing conversation about the realities of suffering from and surviving heart disease. It's the club that no one wants to be a member of. Rebecca Trahan and Melissa Dimmick are united as survivors of nearly fatal heart disease. Their doctor is Mount Sinai cardiologist Maya Bargash. They all came to the CBS2 studios to talk about their experiences. When this happened to you, Rebecca, talk to me about what it was like to feel those symptoms. I had just run 16 miles that day and uh, I had blurred vision and I was a migraine sufferer, so I thought, oh, I'm having a migraine. But you didn't think you were having a heart? No. Rebecca had spontaneous coronary artery dissection, otherwise known as SCAD. She had triple bypass and was told it was a miracle she survived. I had 911 on my phone, I was gonna push send, and I just waited it out. I just waited it out because I thought, oh, why? God. Why though? It can't be happening. I don't want to be a nuisance. What if I'm just having a panic attack? What if they look at me and go, oh, you're out of your mind? And that was the case for you, Melissa, as well. I went to walk in care and I was really short of breath. I really honestly thought I was coming down with a cold and I was really nervous I was going to give it to my brand new baby. It wasn't really just a cold. Mm -hmm. Melissa, who had a baby just days earlier, experienced postpartum cardiomyopathy a rare but dangerous condition that can permanently weaken the heart. This can happen up to five months after giving birth. Well, it's okay that my hands were a little puffy and my feet were a little puffy and the blood pressure was slightly elevated. And, like everything that was happening, I could relate to being pregnant and not, you know, think that there was anything else going on. She now has a heart defibrillator. For all the reasons that you didn't go or didn't want to go, the, the same as Rebecca? Pretty much. It was just one of those things like, I need to be home to take care of my son, and you know, who's, who's going to take care of him, and who will take care of me if something's wrong? All the excuses. Why? Women are, are by nature nurturing and, and by nature don't want to put themselves first. They always want to take care of everybody around them. It's very common for women to wait longer in general and have a longer time to get diagnosed. And there's a lot of reasons that go into that. The symptoms can be a little bit different or atypical. Almost half of the time women, in terms of heart attacks, don't feel the crushing pain, but they feel things that they might think is indigestion or, or a stomach bug and things that don't classically jump out to them. I want to know what the recovery was like, because not just physically, but emotionally. It was six months or so after when I'd done all the physical, achieved all the physical uh, milestones that I had for myself that the emotional part just kind of wreaked havoc. And it wasn't until I met some other survivors, I started to feel more normal or that I wasn't all alone in this, that my emotional recovery began. When, Mine was a little yeah. bit different. All I wanted to do was hold my baby. It was hard. It was very, very hard in that aspect of like, I'm a mom and I'm failing him mm -hmm. because I can't like get up right this second and run around with him. It was a challenge to carry him up a flight of stairs while my heart is not helping me any. And um, so I had moments of that where I was just like, how come I drew the short straw? These women are speaking out to educate and also to encourage others to get help the first sign something is wrong. They refer to a uh, particular uh, blockage in the LAD as the widow maker. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just stop, you know, stop saying widow maker. It is also a widow or maker. Mm -hmm. So let's stop making mm -hmm. it about men. Do you see me? This is postpartum cardiomyopathy 101. Like, pay attention. There are certain things that we know make your risk for heart disease higher, and they're basic things. Smoking, what's your blood pressure? Are you overweight or obese? Do you exercise? 
Do you have atrial fibrillation? Do you have diabetes? All of those things that I mentioned are things that raise or increase your mm -hmm. risk for heart disease. And having those things checked and managed and under control by a doctor are key to preventing more heart disease.